get rolling. Yeah. 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 Sounds good. That's great. Well, thanks everybody for joining today. We can see a bunch of names here and folks joining. So we really, really appreciate this. Um, we've done this for the last year or two in lieu of a live training and we've gotten feedback that it's helpful. So until further notice, we'll just keep doing this unless you guys tell us it's not helpful. Um, well, um, housekeeping things just before we introduce ourselves and get started. Um, you guys are all muted, but you have the ability if everybody sort of hovers at the bottom of your um, screen, right, you can have a, um, there is a chat button and you can put questions in the chat box and I, we think that's probably the best way for us to get questions um, it's just too many people and the acoustics get kind of kooky if we have folks talk um, also we will post the slides and send an email out for with both the slides and the grant inventory worksheet um, and just for folks who are new the grant inventory worksheet lists every project that's funded through the COC and what we ask you to do is as you do your application just confirm that you are using the correct uh, numbers and that you are applying for the amount of money that HUD has agreed you can apply for. So those are just quick housekeeping things. Um, I am Liz Isaacs. We have um, Shannon and Miles also on so the three of us are going to uh, do this presentation all together and um, Shannon what else were we going to talk about just logistics uh, yeah that we were everything's going to be posted to the website after and you should receive an email yep. um, saying when things are posted and how to access them um, I think that's it in terms of housekeeping okay that is but great. welcome. I, we welcome to NOFA season, and we hope you're all enjoying the summer. I would just wanted to add that. Excellent. Mm -hmm. I think we can move slides. Okay. So I also wanted to add that um, NOFA season is often stress-inducing. I will say. Um, but we're all in this together. Um, the HUD, there's lots of details. There's a whole system. That's why we're having this webinar, a whole system called eSNAP, where you enter all this information. There's lots of details to kind of keep in mind and steps to go through. But HUD really does a, does a good job in that, that we're basing this webinar on information that HUD put out, the detailed instructions and several other documents. So they really do spell out step by step, this is how you complete this form. This is how you set up this application. So um, just keep breathing, <laughs> try to follow the instructions. Uh, we understand that it can be stressful, um, but there are lots of resources to draw on and, and we'll, we'll all get through it. Absolutely, and we'll keep mentioning this throughout the webinar, but we, re we are here to provide support and help and answers. That, that's our job. Um, and while it may be kooky season once in a while and it takes us a day or so back to you, we will always respond um, and you should always ask us a question. So there are no, someone asked me a question and said like, oh, I feel like this is a dumb question. And I said, there are no dumb questions. There really aren't. Because Shannon is right, HUD does spell out what's available, but I will counter that with, I don't feel like anything is necessarily very intuitive with HUD or logical necessarily. Yeah. And so it's really tricky because as you try to apply logic to things sometimes, um, <laughs> you'll realize that just doesn't work. And you really just have to follow line by line instructions that HUD gives. And then I will tell you that every season, we come up with a couple questions that just we that are not in the instructions and we reach out to HUD and ask them so there's a mechanism for that too and we will be in touch with HUD as we need to um, so again please please stay in touch with us and I know that I see I know there's some new people on this call but I see some uh, familiar names and I know lots of you have spent a lot of time on the phone with Miles and Miles loves 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 to help out and he's a good e-snaps geek um, and he's the most patient person literally I know. And um, we will all help you, but Miles is really most fun with the technical stuff. Um, so please reach out. Like Shannon said, we're in this together and uh, it can be frustrating um, and stress inducing. And we're gonna keep saying this too. Remember that we're gonna review everything that you do. So nothing's going to HUD without multiple sets of eyes on it. 
Um, so I know sometimes as you send stuff off, you feel like, oh my gosh, what if I made a mistake? It's okay. People make mistakes all the time. And again, that's our job is to review the work you do and uh, put it together in a way that makes sense or makes sense to us to get to HUD. Okay. Okay. Let me take this one. Yeah, sure. So, okay. What is eSNAP? This eSNAP is a system that contains the application form submitted electronically for the annual competition under the Continuum Care NOFA Notice of Funding Availability for Homeless Assistance Programs. So, in eSNAP, the collaborative applicant. Um, formerly referred to as the COC lead agencies, complete the COC applicant profile, submit the COC registration, COC review, and the COC application, while homeless assistance providers, you all complete the project applicants, and that's what applicant profile, so that's one of the things we'll talk about, and then submit one or more project applications, which is what we're going to talk about today. So how to use eSNAP, there's these two um, links at the bottom. If, if you're completely new, they might be helpful to you and how to use the left menu bar, which we'll see some screenshots that include that um, later on in the presentation. Absolutely. So if it makes you feel better as you guys are scurrying to do project applications, um, Shannon and I, other folks on our team are doing the application for the continuum of care. So we also are suffering in our own way. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in this together. <laughs> um, so HUD guide, additional HUD guides and resources that um, we sent out the detailed instructions already, renewal project instructions, um, and then the applicant profile link is here as well. Yeah. And we'll, New this year. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Shannon uh, mentioned this, but I'm just going to reiterate that the detailed instructions are really, really helpful if you're old school like me and unfortunately kill a tree. I actually print it out, um, so I have it saved. <clears throat> Me as I'm working through anything, you don't need to do that necessarily. You can toggle between screens, or some people have two screens. But I, as you're doing the application, I would really have the detailed instructions available because often um, that is your go-to for answering an odd question that you have no idea what they're asking. <laughs> okay. Right. Right. So new this year, um, and some of this may or may not apply to all of the people here on the call, and that might be true for some of these screens as well, um, depending on what type of project you are, some of these things might relate to you or not. But new this year, expansion projects, um, dedicated plus for uh, balance of state providers. So this, this year, the steering committee voted that every permanent supportive housing project will be dedicated plus. So we'll talk about that a little later here. Um, HUD removed or with an outreach for participants portion of the application that was just removed. So yay, it's one less thing we have to do. And then uh, in section 7B of the project application, there's a certification of compliance with all fair housing and equal opportunity regulations and I think this part is new. The project applicant must certify active status for system for award management SAM status on screen 7B. So you just check the box um, following the statement that you're, you are in active status with that. Um, and okay. this is um, Miles. Yep. Yep. This is <laughs> Uh, all the technical stuff. Yeah. I was just going to say all the arrows and things that make me start sweating. We'll let Miles do that. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I come back from vacation for. Exactly. Uh, to handle all the fun stuff. <laughs> the, um, okay, so for eSnaps, you'll see on uh, the uh, top uh, left-hand side, there's going to be uh, you, you enter your username and password, and you hit the login uh, for those who have a uh, user. Um, set up if you're not set up you have to create a profile um, which is it's on the the bottom left of the menu and then uh, it says create profile um, and that'll open up the screen and you put your information in there which will require username uh, email and password 
um, the there's going to be a person that uh, would need to register you on uh, so you could actually see uh, anything in eSnaps as well. Uh, and that's be your admin person in the uh, uh, whoever is in charge of your uh, eSnaps uh, that's already could register, which is, could be anybody. And uh, you, you should have two eSnaps uh, admin people. Um, and so uh, one or the other could actually have you registered in there. For um, for recall, okay. So once you're in uh, and you want to start setting up your applications, uh, you've got to click applicant. Um, everyone has to update the applicant profile, and applicants is um, is the applicant's profile. Uh, once you click that, it opens up a new screen inside the applicant profile, and you get all the uh, different screens and here uh, we'll add um, um, for for the admin people they'll be adding a registrant uh, so they'll go here and click that little um, orange uh, um, I guess a uh, paper clip uh, looking item um, and now and you'll see like right now it's only one person on that list and then you're adding a new one you put name and username email and everyone on the group uh, for eSnaps is administrator. So as soon as you uh, are registered, uh, you will be administrator. Uh, so, you know, when, uh, when you're creating the profile, you have to give the information to the administrator what your profile is going to be. So um, they don't need the password. Uh, actually, they shouldn't have your password, but uh, I know uh, passwords are shared in some cases. but the but they only need to have your name and the username and email uh to uh register you as a registrant and then once you are registered in here you are able to see everything that your agency is able to see uh, also here in the applicant profile um you'll see um, we call one of the screens will show this screen here with uh, will show the agency uh, your app, uh, the, uh, the applicant name which is your agency if your agency is not listed um, if this is you know completely new um, which could be possible for a few agencies this um, this year because uh, they're swapping out of uh, of some other agency who handled the application so they might be new to this they they all have to create a um, on there's a, um, a document with a plus sign there and you have to create the applicant uh, name and profile so you create it there. Um, otherwise, you go to that uh, document that um, we call what the arrow is pointed at and you press open and that will open up your applicant profile. Uh, Good. Next. Yeah. Sorry. Next. Yeah. Okay. I'm used to flipping the screens before. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Once you're in the applicant profile, you'll see there's going to be a bunch of uh, uh, showing. Uh, uh, you'll see uh, a bunch of documents that you'll have to add or uh, fix or correct or update. So the the profile uh, you'll have to go. You should go through each page, like profile type, the organization information contact information, uh, authorized representative, uh, alternate contact. Most of those information should probably doesn't change year to year, but in some cases uh, uh, due to uh, someone uh, moving to a different position in the company or someone is leaving and someone else is coming in to take over, you're gonna update that information. So, or also the organization might move uh yeah move you might have to update as well so most of the first question one to question four are are probably going to stay the same year to year um, then from the section five is those which on the most part other than the hud form uh i'm sorry yeah 
uh, other than the code of conduct, the, uh, the other forms will change every year. Uh, so you'll have to go and update the HUD form 2880 form, which is a, a financial form that changes every year based on your what your uh, funding sources are you're getting from other federal funding sources and also how much you're getting from HUD this year. So that, um, that as I said, uh, that changes year to year and then you have to update it here. Uh, and the most important part, Miles, is that... Oh. Um, is the yeah. edit button, right? I was laughing with the provider the other day. So you're going to get all ready to work on this and then you're going to realize you can't get in it. So you actually have to go to the submission summary and you have to hit the edit button before you can do anything. So that's your first, first task. Yes. Um, on there, this is a quirky, if you're not familiar with these snaps, this is very quirky. That button changes, uh, right now it says edit. So it'll, this says the form is marked as complete. and the once you press the edit button, the bond thing will disappear, but it will say submit uh, or complete. And it uses the same button for both functions. So once it, the edit is gone, it'll say uh, complete or submit. And uh, in this case, I think it's complete. And that means it's now an edit form. And then once you finish everything, then you have to go and press the button again. Uh, and it goes back to edit. If once, and then it'll say the form is complete. If it doesn't, uh, it messes up your application because now the application is saying this is open right now. So you can't really go any further in the application until you complete this. Yes. If, if there's something wrong with the form while you're working on the application, you can go back and edit this and it'll up, automatically update into all, all your applications if you have multiple applications. Yeah, so that's important than what Miles just said. So if you don't know something in the applicant profile or you're, you're waiting to edit your, you know, 2080, go ahead and complete it. Check boxes, make sure you complete it because you always have the ability to edit it. But if you do not complete the applicant profile, and every year we get a dozen calls on this, you cannot, you cannot access um, the sections of your application. So this happens every year. It's again, I think counterintuitive, but anyway, this has to this has to be done so that you can see your application, you can see all the sections of your application. All right. Okay, next slide. Um, thank you. All right, so this is the uh, HUD 2880 form. It used to be a paper form, but now it's not all electronic, so it's pretty straightforward. Uh, the first question is always yes. Um, I, I think now, it used to be you actually had to mark it, but I think it automatically all marks it for you. Um, and then number two, this is a question for each agency. Um, if you're applying more than 200,000, you say yes. If you're not uh, applying for more than 200,000, you put no. Uh, it's pretty straightforward, and that counts for all your applications for this no for process. So. Uh, for example, if you have two grants, 150,000, 150,000, uh, it's not in excess of 200,000, so you can say no. But if you have uh, 50,000, 50,000, and 150,000, it's 250,000, then you say yes. So, and this, because this applies for your agency. So, this also affects if you are also in the, um, I don't know if anyone really is, but if, if you are in both COCs, the, um, the uh, Fairfield, Danbury, uh, um, um, Stanford, uh, Stratford, I think it's, oh no, Stanford, the uh, Continuum, the, and also in BOSS, and you have grants that will exceed, if you combine both COCs grants to over 200,000, then you press yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we do a bunch of agencies that are in both, yeah. so that's good to mention. Yeah. So that gets confusing because you think, oh, you know, you're working with boss and boss is only 150,000 and the other COC is 60,000. Uh, or if you also belong to other states, I don't know, yeah. uh, which I don't think anyone does, but yeah. Um, and here, once you enter yes, in part two, you have to enter uh, your type of assistance. Uh, most of everyone's assistance uh, uh, for other government agencies tend to be. Um, DEMAS or DOH, 
and you write the type of assistance amount. Um, you know, it's support services, it's rental assistance, or operating. I most people have support uh, services uh, assistance. So you put your support service assistance, the amount provided, and uh, <coughs> the respective uses of the fund. Uh, you know, ca uh, case management services. The And then so you place it here. If you have more and what to fill here, you just have to create an attachment, a Word document or a spreadsheet. And there's an, um, there's a, uh, um, on the profile page is an attachment page where you can attach documents. So, uh, the only ones that actually can exceed that is Demis and Demis could probably have a long list of uh, <laughs> assistance that they have to put on there. So if you see here, code of conduct um, should be already attached. If it's not attached, just reattach it. Um, uh, it should be there already. If your code of conduct, for some reason, has been updated, uh, which is possible over the years of time, uh, then you unattach, you delete the old one and attach the new one. Uh, and if you have other documents, like I said, the uh, for the HUD 2, uh, 2880 form, you open up the other attachment and then, um, and then you put a name for it and then attach it, you, um, you upload it and everything else. Uh, and then it would, uh, would, it would show it that you have an attachment, it'll be complete, it's marked. And then, and then the final thing is the, you could uh, export this the PDF uh, so you have a a record copy what your documents are. Uh, typically, uh, we do not review this. Uh, so uh, if there's anything wrong there, uh, it's up to you to make sure it's up, uh, correct. Once in a while, someone asks me to look it over, I'll do that. The HUD-288 form uh, sometimes uh, would appear in the application, so I tend to look at that on the application side. I don't look at the applicant profile. Uh, and then, um, then there's that complete fund, which uh, uh, we you know, it says complete. You press that button, and it will switch to edit. So, as you can see there on the screen. Okay, so this was the um, in each steps, everything has to uh, follow in a process. You can't skip any steps. So, uh, once you finish the applicant profile, you got to go to funding opportunities uh, registrations, and then there. Um, you see the screen, uh, you, the applicant name should be on top. Uh, if you have multiple applicant names, you have to actually um, drag down the, uh, you know, you go to the drop down menu, click on the one you have, and then press that one. Uh, that only affects if you're doing Demons work on the most part or DOH work. The, uh, otherwise, um, it, it should be just the agency name. There. Then you, if you're DOH or uh, DMS uh, agency, um, okay. they, um, I'm not sure on the process on that. I think DOH is doing the applications themselves. DMS is not doing it this year from my understand, but they might already click, um, um, we call the renewal application 2019 uh, on the bottom. And they might have already clicked that. Uh, Yes, you know, Miles, I'm sorry, I meant to update you. I think Shannon and I looked at this last night and um, the Demas projects are set up. I saw Lisa Callahan on here. Just shoot, shoot us a, shoot us something in the chat uh, box if we're wrong about that. But I believe if you are a Demas subrecipient, um, you guys do need to do your own applications and they are set up already. Okay. But everyone yeah, I wasn't else exactly sure on that. Yeah, the... but everybody else needs to create their own projects other than, um, other than DOH, and uh, yep, that's it. All right, so, and then this is also the same page, just in case if you're creating a new application, this is the exact same page for creating a new application. You have to click the register button with the uh, check mark, uh, and once you click that, um, another page will pop up. Um, and you just say, oh, uh, yes, uh, um, and then, I'll create it. Uh, same with the renewal thing. So once you finish that, once you um, 
um, we call got your registration uh, set up there, you got to go into projects and it'll list all the projects for all the years uh, with all the project names, but you, you'll have to go in here and create new projects, except for Demus, which is already created, or DOH might be also created, so you might don't, you don't have to do these two steps. Um, but for everyone else, they will have to go in here and click that document with the orange um, plus sign, uh, because, uh, and then they'll open up a, uh, uh, flip to the next screen. Oh, but this, I'm sorry, skip this step here. Let's skip, go back one step. The, um, the funding opportunity name, you have to click uh, renewal project application FY 2019. If you're doing a new project, you have to say new project application in FY 2019. Uh, right there. And then you click the, um, the plus sign. <laughs> All right, so in here, you'll see you have to uh, create a new project name. Uh, and typically, uh, most agencies would keep the same name they used last year. Uh, and so everything will fall in the same bucket. If you create a new name, uh, might be easier to find it in some ways, but then you'll have a larger list of stuff and it might get more confusing. Uh, especially if you have a lot of more, a lot of projects, then you have pages and stuff. But if you keep it everything the same name, uh, it just makes it, you know, so you open up that name later and you'll find everything under that name listed, uh, you know, all the different years. So just, you know, it, that's up to you on that. Uh, typically, the uh, HUD kind of frowns on all these name changes, <laughs> but, you know, they, they they're not going to complain overall. So don't put draft as a name in here because when you create the first name, even though you can edit and change it later, for some reason uh, it will keep the same name uh, in the when it awards the grant. And uh, when the awards come in later in the year or, or uh, beginning of next year, they'll have the original name that you created, even though you edited it uh, later on. So, and some agencies get a little frustrated with that. So say draft or say uh, something that, you know, you might have a, a, a temporary name in there and it'll stay that instead of the name that you want. Yeah, just make sure, I just like Miles said, unless there's a, some compelling reason that we can't think of right now, um, it really should just be the same name because it also, it gets confusing for us and for HUD on, uh, what the project is called and which project is being funded. So I think that's um, kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. The other mm -hmm. thing I'll say, and this part's important, and Shannon mentioned it earlier on, not every slide is going to apply to your projects. So don't, don't get upset if we talk about something and then it doesn't um, apply to you or you, you think that you've missed something. So for the YHDP folks, so that's the, um, those are the youth folks that I know a bunch of on the call, um, you will not be able to import data because you can't import data your first year, your first renewal year. Other folks that aren't going to be able to um, will be if a project was consolidated last year. I believe you were, not, I could be wrong, I didn't check this, but you're not going to be able to import the data probably. Um, I will, we'll look into that. But anyway, and then anyone who was funded last year and you're doing the renewal this year, you will not be able to import data. So definitely import data if you can, and most of you will be able to, but some of you will not be able to. Just another a note on that, if you're not able to import data, you can, uh, you can often cut and paste, cut from the last year's application, any sections that apply if you weren't able to import, and then just paste it into your new document. There. Absolutely. And what's easiest yeah. um, to do is PDF last year's application, then you have it on your computer, and then you can just cut and paste from your PDF document. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Well, on, on this... You mentioned about the consolidated grant. The consolidated grant, there, if you're able to import the consolidated grant, there's going to be two grants that are listed. So you got to make sure you import the proper one. Uh, there's the one, the, un, the, uh, the original source version versus the, um, the, um, the consolidated version. So there's going to be two versions of the uh, grant. Uh, so you got 
if you're able to import that. I, I think you, uh, you should be able to, but uh, we're talking about eSnaps and uh, its funky uh, capabilities that uh, Liz might be right, you might not be able to import that. Yeah, um, and then I just want to be clear too, because we're talking about importing data from last year, but anyone who has a YHDP grant has to go through and do everything we've been talking about. So um, the only folks who are not doing that for YHDP are okay, would, be any, would be anyone who um, is a subrecipient in the DOH grant. But if you are if you are a grantee, if you are a YHDP grantee, you are doing all of this work that we're talking about today. So just to be clear, we had gotten a question on that. Okay. So, so what we were saying was that YHDP cannot import data, but they will be inputting yes. data, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. So, once you're uh, finished creating all the grant names in the project, you you go into submissions. Um, you look for the grant um, and then uh, you look for your grant that uh, asks for 2019, uh, the renewal or new. And before you open up, you've got to make sure um, these things are already complete. Uh, so because the, uh, if these are not complete, the application uh, won't be fully, uh, won't fully open. So, because these are linked to, which is kind of weird uh, thinking about it. The, um, I, you know, based on the previous pages, uh, it's not really showing the other documents. So, uh, just make sure the HUD 2880 form is all complete because the two, uh, the 424 doesn't seem to be in the applicant profile. So, I'm actually curious on, um, Some of this was uh, used to be on the other um, the applicant profile, but now it's going to probably be all in the application. So you might have to do this multiple times. The so once you're in this uh, submissions uh, and you open up the whatever grant, you're going to see this. Um, uh, we got to go back to the other page. Uh, these are the forms that you um, you'll see, and then, um, and you have the, all this stuff will have to be complete before the second section of the form will open up. All right, all right. I'll let Liz do, deal with this one. Oh, I think this is just if you need information on um, your DUNS number. And most people know it and have it, but if not, um, you are able to use that website to get information. And then fill it in if you don't have one. Yep. All right. So pin number. Um, okay. So your grant number has, starts with CT uh, for Connecticut. That's everybody. And then uh, you'll have four digits. Um, and you know it'll be a zero and three other numbers. Could be a zero one one or uh, zero two hundred and some odd number. Uh, so those that's your identifier for your grant. All the other numbers of your grant number are uh, some of it's uh, you know type of grant it is, what year the funding source is coming from, what COC and stuff like that. So that's not important uh, for this section. The pin numbers, the and the 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 numbers that never change is the those four numbers with the CT. So uh, that identifies that grant uh, historically. Uh, and going forward until, unless you merge it with another grant. Okay. So this the only thing you have to do is make sure that uh, grant number or identify is correct. Uh, if it's incorrect, uh, you'll have to fix that, but on most parts, it's usually correct. So then uh, the next okay. page is the congressional district. Um, in this case, uh, if it's imported, you just uh, you're going to be updating the proposed project uh, start and end date for those who have to type this in. You got to make sure your the oh applicant. Uh, this gets a little trickier. The 
if you're the applicant uh, would have, you know, if that means the agency or whoever is the grantee, the applicant, uh, will have to put all the congressional districts uh, for the, uh, the applicant and then all the congressional districts for the uh, project. So the, the applicant might be in all five districts, but the project could be in one. And then you place the, uh, the uh, you select the ones that it belongs to the project, and but the applicant, you, uh, you'll select all Connecticut if you belong to all Connecticut. And then, you, then that's, um, for anyone else, you just make sure it, it's listed correctly, uh, usually import properly, and, and then you just change the project, proposed project date. This is an error for most people that are putting in the information. Uh, they forget to change the date. So last year, I would say, um, you know, it started 2018 and ends 2019. You want to show it starts at 2019 and 2020. The only exception. Sorry. Oh. Uh, the only exception is your January to December grant, uh, then it would be uh, 2020 to 2020. But that's really the only exception to the rule, but everything else should be 2019 to 2020. Miles, aren't we, so this is for the dates for the proposed project. So wouldn't yes. it be 2020 to 2021 because it's proposed oh, to I'm start sorry. next year, right? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, looking at the uh you know that's what happens when you look at uh, some other document at the same time the um <laughs> yeah so so yeah just start date would be 2020 and the end date would be 2021. so i wanted to pause here and see if there, anyone had any questions for us if you do just put them in the chat box and while you're doing that um, Lisa Callahan did get back and she said that she confirmed that she did set up all the projects. She answered all those questions that we were talking about that the project applicant had to answer. So um, for Demas projects, you should be ready to begin in East Mass. And I'll just give a couple of seconds for people to, okay, Beth Ann says, what was the complete email address for the ask help? Let me let me backtrack to that one. To get the DUNS number. There you go. So ask gmo at hud.gov. And again, these slides will be posted to the website later today, but yeah, we're happy to give that again. So Amanda says, if we are consolidating the full consolid application would also be a renewal application question um i believe the answer to that is yes uh, but but i think we do we talk a little bit about consolidation later here um and we say to contract us honestly because it's a, it's kind of a rare thing um, and it's still a new process. I think last year was the first year they they started this new thing where for consolidations, each grant that is planning on consolidating has to has to complete a renewal as if they weren't consolidating. And then there's one you can consolidate up to four grants. And then there's one consolidated grant that includes all of the other grant information in it. So however many grants you're consolidating have to have to submit own separate grants and then one consolidated grant yeah that's where it gets complicated yeah. so if you're consolidating two grants you should have three you're gonna you're gonna fill out three applications yeah uh, right the, let's say grant a grant b and then grant a is going to be the, the the surviving grant then it'd be the grant a uh yeah. consolidated yeah, so yeah. The, there's yeah. going to be two versions of one grant number, uh, but one's going to say consolidated and one's not. I know we have yeah. a handful right. of folks doing that, and I would say that um, you probably, you know, contact us, go ahead and get started, um, but we'll work with you because you do have to do two applications and check certain boxes. Yeah. And, um, we did not go into detail on that um, in right. this presentation, so we're happy to work with you on it. 
Yeah, and yeah. I would do the consolidated version last because you want to Correct. make sure the first two are the regular renewals exactly. are complete. Mm -hmm. And then you do that one after because that one really, you have to combine the information. Yep. And that one you can make mistakes because you were actually inputting and merging two grants information together and and mm -hmm. uh, not yeah. uh, not saying there was any mistakes last year but you know potentially you could just do a data entry uh, you're looking at one you've got to add the other one and whatnot things yeah. go offline um, uh, there was a question Amanda about data. Saying, I kind of missed it so um, Amanda's yeah. saying she read the instructions for consolidation and she seems to be clear on the rest so that's awesome we love people who get the instructions um, and then Lisa was just clarifying, uh, Lisa Callahan, my understanding for the project dates is they want the current project date. So you can see on this screen here, it says proposed project. So that's why we're putting in the date for this grant that we're applying for now, which is proposed to start next year. Right, Miles and Liz, does that make sense? Yeah, uh, these are, yeah. so if you are, in most cases, your dates are already on here. You're just updating the year from what it says yeah. now to the following year. So, yeah. uh, right. uh, because this this grant's supposed to start when your current grant uh, ends, if your current mm -hmm. grant even started yet. Uh, but your 2018 NOFA grant ends. So your 2018 uh, NOFA grant ends. Uh, Let's say uh, 2020, uh, April 1st, 2020, uh, then the, your new grant's gonna be ending at April 1st, 2021. So right. uh, each grant, everyone's grant proposed dates, it's gonna be different based on their operating uh, period. There's also, this is rare, uh, please, but please inform us if, uh, someone's grant's been extended because the proposed dates will change. Uh, so if we're looking at it and, you know, sometimes I'm a little, you know, I check other things where uh, other reviewers only look to see if the year date's correct, but I might be reviewing based on some of my, my other information. And I notice the date has changed. I, I'll be wondering why the, you know, I was suspecting July 1st, and they'll suddenly see September 1st. Uh, you know, I'd be questioning if that's correct or not. So uh, if you make a change in your, you know, because in the, you had an extension, please notify us on that so we can update our information internally. And also uh, not ding you on if uh, we notice that. All right, so we're going to move forward, but we'll have time for questions later also. Yes. Um, okay, so once the, if you notice, uh, the once uh, Section 1, the forms is all complete, and, uh, Section 2 will, and, uh, will open up and you'll see uh, various different sections, but you have to go down to submissions without changes and click uh, if you're going to edit any of the um, charts above or you're gonna um, submit it without any change. In most cases, uh, you will have to edit something uh, because uh, some details have changed, especially the, probably the budget. The, uh, in some other cases, uh, the description, uh, people write descriptions that are, have to be update, it, updated every year because you talk about uh, the 2018 pit, now you have to talk about the 2019 pit, or uh, or some other data that's on the annual basis, you always have to update the description there. Um, so we really- so I wanna just- Yeah. Yeah. I wanna just <laughs> note there that HUD, HUD kind of wants, if you can submit without changes, as much as you can do without changes, HUD is encouraging you to do that. So some of those sections, like the description, if maybe if you, if your projects could avoid using data that might change year to year and just say, just go into a description of this is what we do. And um, 
you know, I, I've looked at dozens of project applications and thought to myself that could have been written, like things that I've written, you know, that could have, I could have said that better. How can I tweak that? But there, we're not looking to tweak those kinds of things at this, at, at this level. Um, but the budget stuff, like where your rental assistance amount might change year to year, of course you have to change that. Um, so it's more those places that are, are necessary to change year to year that you're going to click on. Yeah, um, but I, to I, yeah just to echo what Shannon said, this is a place where it actually really makes sense to <laughs> spend some time and ponder. Um, because anything that you can keep the same, you really do want to keep the same. Um, and then if you do decide to change something, um, you need to tell HUD um, what changes you mm -hmm. made, like why you changed it. And you could just do some bullets and that's fine. We're gonna, another screen will tell you which ones you have to change. So there are definitely some that you have to, um, have to change. But again, just like Shannon said, uh, it, you know, like if it ain't broke, <laughs> just keep as much as you can keep. So, and it, I have a question. Yeah. I have a question, Liz. Um, this is Brittany Gibson. Um, I just currently, last year we had the same problem is that in the program description um, uh, under Housing First, it, it says um, that we don't, like it's encrypted that we don't follow a Housing First, but we do. Um, so when I click to make changes and I write the description saying, you know, Section 3D says we don't, does the project follow a Housing First approach? It says no. And it, so I go to make changes to that specific section, but the drop down is not letting me change it to yes. There's no, um, Shannon, correct. Is that, is there still the, I don't think we have a That's, housing first section, right? That's gone this year, right? I don't, I don't know that it's gone, but if I recall correct, if it's not gone, what that was, was you have to answer these series of questions, yes or no, and then it, populates itself whether you are yeah. following housing so if you click no you're not doing one of those things it's automatically going to say no you don't follow housing first so you have to change what you clicked below yes. in order for the housing oh, first see. thing okay to, well, yeah. yeah so basically the, all the questions have to say yes that you do that uh where housing first automatically populates yes uh, yeah yeah okay okay so i guess one of the one of them wasn't clicked so i would just hit the last one and then it'll pre-populate so just hit save exactly yeah okay. yeah thank you sure so, um yeah so this is the page with the changes and the other change uh it's going to always you can always uh change 60 you might change the attachments too but 60 yeah, yeah. um yeah. It's always going to change because your match has to be updated. Uh, unfortunately, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's no way around that one. So the match uh, has to be updated on a yearly basis because it has, the amount might be the same, the agency might be the same, but the dates uh, it's going to be different. Uh, mm -hmm. So everyone's always going to have a change. There's, uh, there's no way around that one because 60 is going to change uh, for everybody. So that's that's uh so you might everything else might be the same um which is great um but yeah so the uh but you're gonna have one change so you always have to mark that the anyone for it's working with demas uh you know with the sub recipient um well, actually we'll we'll flip to the next page first yeah, i was um i just want to note on here the number one says are the requested renewal funds reduced from previous award as a result of reallocation so there are a few very few grants who or projects that want to reallocate so that's where you would click yes and then it would enable you to put in a reduced budget from yep. last year um, and then at the bottom here um, after the check is where HUD wants, if you said you want to make a change, quickly note, and it says, it says right in here, bullets are appropriate, quick, quick, quickly note why you're making the change, where you're, wherever it is that you're making the change. And you're not able to edit any of these screens that are listed here, part two through part seven, and unless you check that you're making a change on them. Right, and yeah, then so you have to check Miles this. or Shannon, as soon as you 
I know I finished just said like, don't be afraid to click and don't be afraid to say, you know, save you can always go back. I th this is one of the ones that if you say you want to change and then you said like, oh no, I changed my mind. It's okay, but you're but yeah. it, you've already told HUD you wanted to make a change. So what you do in the explanation is you just say erroneously click button or you know click button by accident yeah. and it's totally fine. Like don't you know, no one's losing funding because of that. But again, like sit here and ponder this before you start clicking away because as soon as you click and save, HUD's going to give you those screens. They're going to open the screens up for you. Um, so I'm not making, and again, the, the, there's an easy remedy, which is just, I tell HUD you made a mistake and that's totally fine. Um, but yeah. just ponder before you click on this particular screen. Um, going Liz, back to, to 6D, that um, gentleman just said Matt. that there's always going to have to be a change. And, and maybe you said this earlier and I missed it, but where do you find those, where do you find that change? Is that on your grant application? Or is that something like I would have to get from Dima? Well, uh, six, match? the match is coming yeah, from your, um, in most cases, most people get cash match and it's probably Demas. Uh, you get that letter from Demas saying um, that they, they're giving this amount of support for this grant. So, um, and from such and such date to such and such date, whatever your operating period is, um, and they give you the grant name and, you know, it, it's very simple. They get, it's a letterhead uh, from that agency, Demis, so say, for example, uh, states that they're giving funding uh, to support the program and the amount of funding and the uh, grant number and the operating period and uh, the purpose for the funding. Uh, it's probably like a three, four sentence thing and it's signed by uh, someone from a Demis, uh and just to just to interrupt here, in general, most of the time, right, Mile? I mean, I can't think of too many scenarios. You're really just updating your previous um, match letter. And the reason we're saying it changes, well, you have to, you need a new letter. But it also, the amount may change because um, fair market rent changes. So if you had a, a rental assistance project, right. your your amounts change. That's why your that's why your match amount would change because it's. And so this is not for the. This is not 2019 to. 2020 this is 18 to 19 um so no, what, this this would be for the whatever your 20 right. to 20 20 uh 2020 to 2021 20. mm -hmm. uh it's for that grant so this is for the grant mm -hmm. that you're proposing that will apply for so you're oh, getting okay. Okay, I'm it, sorry. It, in some okay. cases i know it's a laborious process to get match letters from some agencies so demus is very good doh is i'm sure is very good but in some agencies, I know it's a process um, where you take the old letter, say here, um, please, you know, um, you know, we need something for this year. Here's the sample letter that you did last year. Could you please update it for this year? You know, uh, in most cases, you just have to show what you did last year and you just update that one. These are in cash match. You don't have to attach. You just need to. Um, have it for your records because if HUD does an audit or in some cases uh, the COC, us, uh, you know, um, Shannon, myself, or Lauren Howard uh, does an audit, uh, we'll look for the match um, information. Uh, so we'll look for the match letter uh, and that type of thing. Uh, make sure you have all the documentation. Uh, for non-cash match, but you know this is uh, will be uh, spoken later. You need the letter to you have to attach the letter because not uh, in kind uh, matches you have to attach them. So yep. and you have to. Uh, there's another. There's, there's a question in the chat box here. Excuse me. Um, that do, asking, do we need match letters by eight five? No, no. What's the usual so, policy for that? Yeah. Um, you need it before, to be honest with you, you have to have it dated between the, between, let's say, let's say today to uh, when the application is due to HUD. Uh, I would do it uh, obviously days before that, but you know, so you need it dated between those dates. So it has to be during the application process. 
Yeah, but, but it would make you know, sense. Like, right, but people just... are asking because they the, um, they want to make sure they don't have to have it in hand in yeah. two weeks. You don't, but I we would encourage you to get moving on it. And um, basically, HUD says it has to be dated. I'm forgetting the first date, but the second date is by September 30th. But for us, um, you just want to get get moving and get your commitment dates as quickly as you can. Um, yeah. Yeah, and if you don't have the match information yet. Uh, you could leave the information blank, you know, like put a zero. If you know the amount's gonna be the same, this, uh, you don't even know the, the, let's say you don't know the date of the letter yet, uh, don't change the information on the thing. Just say, um, uh, we call one, you submit the application on by, uh, by August 5th uh, for our review. Um, uh, we call it, just uh, submit it with uh, a note to us saying the match information is uh, still being worked on. So on our second review or third review, uh, <laughs> uh, fourth or fifth, the, uh, we'll not review the match now, but we'll review the match later. We might even mark it up saying, uh, please update the match uh, because uh, sometimes we just have the applications and got the note, but yeah. But the fact that, don't worry, uh, make sure the final application, when uh, you f I submit the final version, the match information is updated by that. Uh, the initial version, uh, because of, you know, agencies moving slowly to fill out those documents, you might not have it. Okay. Uh, someone asked about the HUD right. due date. Yeah, let's keep yeah, the HUD due date for the whole NOFA is the September 30th. The due date for the project applications is one month prior to that. The, the, yeah. Um, but as you can see, we have, we have dates ahead of that so that we can review the project applications and make sure that everything in line with, with what HUD requires for that. So I'm gonna take the next few slides here. We still have a few to get through and, and we wanna be conscious of everybody's time. Um, so just to remind you all that if you are submitting with no changes, you still have to complete these screens. Recipient performance, and these are all on the left-hand menu on your application screen. Um, recipient performance, renewal expansion, renewal grant, consolidation screen. So that's where you would fill out if you are planning on consolidating. Um, 3A project detail. There's just a bunch of check boxes. The yes or no is on that screen. 6D sources of match, all of part seven and all of part eight. So here's that grant consolidation screen. Um, we, we talked about that a little bit already. Um, project subrecipients, just to clarify this. Um, the total expected subaward should be the amount of HUD grant cash funds from this grant that you're applying for um, that the service provider is receiving from the grantee. So cash match wouldn't be included as a subrecipient. Um, so as it says, cash match funds or rental assistance funds paid by the grantee directly to landlords, those people are not subrecipients. Yeah, so your subrecipient fund should be like your um, support services. If you do get rental assistance funds for the 8% for the housing um, piece, uh, that one gets a little more complicated. And then if you might get, you're supposed to get um, um, a piece of the admin funds, uh, about 50%, at least 50% of the admin funds. But I know Demas previously has not <laughs> admin funds. so. This number gets a little fuzzier for some agencies, but in most cases, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, you should be getting all the uh, support services. You should be getting a uh, 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 percentage of the admin funds, and you potentially, if you're getting rental assistance funds, you're getting some of that as well. If you, um, you get uh, the leasing, that's a question. I'm not really sure on the leasing because some I'm not sure if the grantee pays directly to the landlord or they pay to the yeah, agency. Yeah, if, if, if it comes up as an issue, let us let us know. We'll yeah. help you through it. Oh, uh, this All one right. common mistake on that one is people put the full grant amount on the subaward, 
And that's incorrect because it's only the amount that you are receiving as an agency, uh, not the grant, uh, full grant amount. Uh, I can't think of any agency getting the 100% of the fund. Okay. Um, dedicated plus, we mentioned this a little bit earlier in the presentation for all PSH projects are, are now converting. CT Boss steering committee voted all PSH projects are converting to dedicated plus. So section on screen 3C, um, question one, there's this drop down menu um, and, and it will, you're going to indicate that you're 100% dedicated plus on there if you're a PSH is, project. Yeah, yep, so it's only for PSH, um, only for yep. PSH renewals that we're talking about. So ignore us if you're not one of those for a minute. And we will be doing um, trainings and explaining more about dedicated plus. We don't want to spend the time and go into it now. I will just say so that no one panics, um, chronically homeless people are still going to be prioritized and served and we'll go into that um, in more detail. Um, it is definitely a change um, and we'll explain the practical changes in the coming, coming months. Um, but for now, we're just going to let you know, um, you're going to put 100% dedicated plus and yeah. Question, question Liz, um, on that. So I'm just like in the screen now I'm trying to follow along with you. Um, and is th that's a pre-populated one as well. So when you click make changes, because we were always 100% dedicated, not dedicated plus before. Yeah. So when you go to make the change, do you have to click something on the screen before 3B? Yes. Yeah, so thank you. So we should actually add that. We will add that. I'll make a note. We'll add that to our list. So yes, you're going to need to say, I need to make a change to that, right? Because that's not one of the um, screens where you have to. So you'll need to choose that as a, uh, I want to make the changes. Right. So when you go to make the changes, though, what I'm saying is, um, do you have to click something on the screen before? Because you know, like how we just talked about 3D being like pre-populated, you have to check all the boxes. No, I don't think this no. is that type of a question. This is uh, and 3C is the first question, so there's nothing to. Uh, so, no, there's so no prior I, question to change. This you just have to change this one. You're, yeah, you're just answering that question. That's it. So it doesn't let you drop down. You do drop down, but it's just this one question. It's not questions prior to that that relate to this question. Right. So what I'm saying is, is that um, when I go to make the change to 100% mm -hmm. dedicated plus or, or dedicated plus, it doesn't let you drop down. Did you like I'm following with you guys and making the change? The screen, did you did you ask to make the change in that screen? Yep. Yep. So on 3C, on this screen, submissions without changes, you'd click the box next to 3C and said, yes, I want to make a change to this Today, screen. Yep. Yeah. And it doesn't let, mm. I mean, I'm trying again, but. You know why also, um, it's a good question. You may have other parts of your application that, talk, that, that um, I don't know. It could be one of the things where you have something else checked for chronic homelessness. I don't know. We often right, don't that's, know. That's until what I mean. I, yeah, so I don't know. Yeah, it's, I mean, they don't write it in the answer. They don't tell us about it in the detailed instructions. Um, but that's what I'm thinking. I so would, yeah. we'll do everything I, else and go back to it. Um, because chances are in one of the later screens where you talk about um, how many chronically homeless beds you have, it's picking up on that. So that might be. Okay. Do the rest, but thank you for the heads up on it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's always Thank something you. quirky that we haven't found. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. All right. So for a supportive services, just note for this screen, you have to check for each of these supportive services listed. What provider? What type of provider? Non-partner, partner, sub-recipient um, is doing the service, and then with what frequency? For provider, if you indicate that a partner will provide this service, you must ensure, according to HUD, that a formal agreement or MOU has been signed. If you don't have a formal agreement or MOU, change the response to non-partner. And then for any supportive services costs included in the supportive services budget in Section 7, um, you must have 
the applicant or subrecipient listed as the provider. So for example, if mental health services are included in the supportive services budget in section seven, then this chart should indicate either the recipient or a subrecipient is the provider of mental health services. Um, and then housing type and location. The unit um, must match what's on your 2019 GIW, which we will send out to you later today, um, or grant agreement. And then your total beds and units must be consistent with Section 5A households and Section 5B subpopulations. And they must indicate the maximum capacity at a given point in time. Also, the numbers reported must reflect the units and beds directly supported by the COC program awarded funds. This does include those units supported only by supportive services costs without any rental assistance, leasing, or operating costs. And then budgets. Um, Renewal grants no longer need to provide detailed budgets. They did in the past, but they do not now. So the summary budget lines must correspond to GIW with the exception, as you see down the bottom, if, you, if you're reallocating funds, which you would check on that previous screen that we noted, and then you would just um, adjust your budget accord, uh, down according to how much you're reallocating. Budgets are changed through a grant agreement amendment, not through grant renewal, again, with the exception of reallocation. So you can't just randomly say, I'm going to take money out of my operating budget and put some more in supportive services. This is not the time to do that. Um, all of those budget line items should correspond to whatever is on the GIW at this time. Anything else on that, Miles or Liz? No. No, on the most part, your budgets are going to stay the same. Your support services uh, and everything else. But if you guys did the uh, re you know changes that's already on the grant inventory worksheet, then you will make changes in the budget accordingly uh, to the GIW, which you already have approved. Um, there's going to be uh, one grant that we're having an issue with, which we're going back with HUD, but that's a uh, YHDP grant, so that'll be highlighted on the GIW that uh, should change. But everyone else is going to follow the uh, GIW at this point. All right, Liz, you want to? No, nobody ever wants to earn an indirect cost. <laughs> it's a short, no, I remember. No, it's a it's a short slide, so yes, I can do it. Um, you're going to indicate um, if you're uh, taking it, if you have an indirect cost rate. Um, we are, I, we can talk offline about folks learn where I will tell you that there's been a lot of talk over the last year about indirect cost rates. We've done trainings on this. So if this is new to someone, um, I can point in the direction on our website to a training, um, about whether you should use indirect or not, but, um, uh, ba -ba -ba, you should, uh, so you're just going to choose whether or not you're going to do it. And if you have an approved indirect cost rate, you have to submit a copy of the approval with this application. Sorry, that's all I have to say. That's fine. Um, we talked a bunch about match, but I'll just talk quickly. Um, you, you know, folks know that it it's 25% of your grant, excluding, um, except for leasing costs. Um, this part's important. I think folks have gotten better. Don't exceed 25% because that's all that's required of you and HUD monitors you and so you're on the hook for every dollar you told HUD is a match. Um, if folks want to, we can resource. Um, yes, we did. There's an FAQ on matches. Miles spends a lot of time talking to people about matches. Um, again, I th most of the time or my experience with renewals is that folks are really just updating a previous match. Um, if you do have, um, if you're doing a third party or an in-kind match, you do need to attach the MOU. For the most part, folks do cash matches. That's frankly the easiest way to do it. And if you have questions or have concerns on match, um, definitely give us a ring and check in with us. Okay. 
Um, these are the budget screens folks are used to seeing. So um, we already talked about this. You're not submitting, they've made it really easy. Um, you're not submitting detailed budgets. Um, you'll just see places you're gonna put in uh, the amount. The rental assistance, I think that will populate for once you put your um, project, once, once you set up FMRs so and the number of units you have. And I know we keep saying this, but the most impo important, one of the most important things is that what you give, um, what you're submitting to us to review, and then ultimately a HUD really does have to match the GIW. There's no room for changing. So, um, it just needs, and I, I know Shannon put a note in, unless you're reallocating. So we have two or three projects that are reallocating some money, their budgets will be a little different. Okay. Uh, just a note, um, every, we don't have any lease structures, uh, so no one should have um, a budget of lease structures. Uh, everyone should be either uh, leasing or rental assistance, or they, or they, if they're a TH project, it might not have either one. But yeah, you, you should not have any lease structure. Uh, we don't have a project that has lease structure. Got it. So. All right, so for our YHDP friends, um, we're going to do a, a couple slides on this. But I can't stress enough, and I know that Katie Durant sent it out to folks to read the detailed instructions. So YHDP, so this is really important, you guys have your own detailed instructions. Um, we inserted it here. Um, and so once you get the slides, you can click on it. If you, if you want them immediately, once we all hang up, shoot me a note and I'll forward them to you if you didn't get them. But again, I, Katie sent them out and as you do your project, you should sit with the detailed instructions because it should walk you through each step. Um, it, this, the uh, YHDP renewals are new for us too, so we'll learn alongside with you. If as you're working through this, something doesn't make sense, please reach out to us and let us know. Um, so we just listed the, the questions. So you have many of the same screens that we just went through and talked about, but then you have additional questions. So the next couple slides show the different questions. So there are gonna be questions about um, what your project does, do you carry out um, housing problem um, solving activities to divert or rapidly exit folk, or do you carry out housing problem solving activities? As you go through this, you should have drop down menus and the ability to um, click and answer these questions. Um, okay, Shannon. Um, you're going to need to talk about the populations you serve. You're going to um, need to talk about if you're using rental assistance, if the, um, you know, and then we gave some, uh, some uh, instructions here. So if you are using rental deposits, it's required if you answer yes to the question before. And so basically we just lifted a lot of these questions and information from uh, the detailed instructions. So Shannon, next screen. So you will see all of this information plus a lot more in the detailed instructions. So they're asking you about um, if you were awarded a waiver and many of these things, YHDP, um, you know, a lot of it's because there are varied projects. Some things will be applicable to you, some things won't be applicable. You'll answer yes or no to a question and you'll get another set of questions. Um, so it works like the other projects, but they are more varied than, than uh, the renewals that we're used to. Okay, Shannon, next. Um, and it explains here that every budget line item selected will open up a text box to explain how funds are spent um, for uh, if, you, if you select a certain budget line item. So click around, get started. Um, well, we'll talk more about this, but I would encourage folks to get started right away um, while the momentum is there. And if we need to ask HUD a question, and I'll tell you every year we have to ask them something because there's something quirky, it's so much better for us to know sooner rather than later if folks are struggling. So um, yeah, get in those applications um, and start clicking around. Uh, next slide. Uh, before we go to the, this slide, yep. um, this, there was one slide that we don't have is the uh, recipient performance. And um, just wanted to bring this up because of um, uh, sometimes there is uh, slight issues. Uh, there's, four, there's four questions in recipient performance and two that pop up is, um, which may, may not uh, cause an issue. 
is uh, question one, has the recipient successfully submitted the APR on time on the most re recently expired grant term uh, related to this uh, renewal project request? Uh, so if your grant's completed and you submitted on time, you just press yes, that's pretty easy. And if you didn't submit on time, you say no, that's easy too. And then you have to write an explanation. But the third issue is, you know, the grant has expired, but you didn't submit it yet. It's still on time because you have 90 days. You have to say um, uh, no, and then you answer, explain it's, uh, you know, called, it's being submitted. Uh, you have to explain uh, that uh, you have 90 days to submit. You're going to submit it uh, within this due date of whatever the due date is. Uh, so, you, um, so you have to put that in. Um, same with the question fours, have any funds been recaptured by HUD for the most recently expired grant uh, term related to the renewal project request? And that means, you know, any money that you did not spend. Uh, so if you uh, left $5 of this grant, you have to say yes and, you know, explain why, uh, in simple terms, why you didn't spend the $5. <laughs> so majority of the grants will say yes, uh, they're rental assistance because most rental assistance grants uh, are unable to spend every penny. Uh, there's a few to have, but usually it's a yes on that. Uh, other grants that it's leasing and whatnot um, tend to say uh, no because they spent every penny. So they have a little playroom where they can spend every penny, even if they have to do a, a budget mod uh, in, uh, to spend out the, uh, the funds. Okay. Well, that's great. Yeah. Miles for pointing that out. Um, so yeah, I, I, I typically notice those questions because uh, I review the you know, you guys, uh, grants and everything else. So I'm more familiar with uh, right. noticing that. And I can see uh, based on the dates and stuff that, you know, uh, where, uh, where, uh, where the answer should work or where not, uh, should not work. Uh, where, yeah, so. Got it. So I know we keep t uh, telling you, but if you um, click on these when we send them out, you'll get all kinds of resources. So you can read about how to do the applicant profile, how to do the renewal application, and then we have the um, new application resources. Um, you know what, just a note, I realized we didn't tell anyone, so fo uh, we may have some folks who applied for new money. So um, every year, HUD, not uh, every year so far, who knows what will happen in the future, but HUD makes bonus money available. So new project money, and we had um, 17 or 18 applications for new PSH, new rapid rehousing projects, and the scoring committee has met. Um, and the, at the next steering committee, the steering committee will approve um, scenarios on how to spend the bonus funds, and then folks will find out the week of August 19th if you have been selected. So just an update on new projects. We haven't forgotten about you. It just takes um, a while to go through the process of figuring it all out. Okay, so this is the renewal timeline. I know people are saying, ugh, August 5th, um, but we would love them sooner. Well, I'll tell you, some people have already submitted them, which is really exciting. If you get them to us early, we can look at them really quickly and get them back to you. And then you can get submitted and then not have to talk to us anymore and have your application <laughs> done and put it behind you. So we really do encourage folks to just get in there and get it done. Um, so we, so what you're going to do is you are going to, and I think uh, Miles or somebody showed the um, export to PDF. It's actually a little button. So you're going to do your application. You are not going to submit the application, but I want to let you know because we got panicked calls on this. If you submit the application, we can release the application. So there is nothing okay. that you can do to submit something right. to HUD right now. So like, there's really no button that you can push, and I'm just saying this for the newbies, that you're gonna make something terrible happen. So we wanna have people feel comfortable in these snaps and click around and do what you need to. So just so you know, what the submit button does is then it, it, um, it's in our listing. 
Um, you ultimately will do that, but you're not going to do it on the first go around. The first go around, you're going to PDF it and you're going to send it to us. I won't read all the instructions here. We will review it. We will get you feedback as soon as possible. And we get it back to you sooner if you send them to us sooner. And then we, some, so I know Miles made a joke. Sometimes we have to go back three and four times and often just because there's some quirky issue, we're helping someone through. But ultimately the final, final deadline to get it in and to hit that submit button is the 26th. Um, we don't anticipate it should take the majority of you that long. We hope, Miles knows better than I do, but there at least maybe half the folks who are going to submit, we're going to say maybe make a change, maybe make no changes, and then hit submit. And then you're done. Um, it's really, we just put this deadline in because HUD does have a deadline that we have to have all of these in 30 days before we submit. So we have to have a deadline. Um, but again, we encourage you to get us your applications as soon as you can. We'll get you feedback and we'll end this process as soon as possible. And for those that submitted already, um, obviously you'll have to go back to fix the uh, dedicated question. Uh, oh, so you, you could fix that. That they? <laughs> they already got it right. Yes. <laughs> uh, because um, uh, obviously if you didn't update that, which uh, was probably not everyone was aware of the change, uh, unless you were into the steering committee uh, meeting, the, um, you, you have the incorrect information. You have to update that. Yeah. Oh, and then someone mentioned, I think it was Brittany, uh, you probably have to fix uh, 3A. So check 3A. Um, because it's uh, 3A might, you know, maybe you don't have a list as a PSH, and that's why the dedicated thing is not working. I'm, so let's check that. We'll figure it out. We'll solve that, Mr. Zimmer. Yeah. All right. Do folks have, right. If folks have questions, if you want to use the chat box and ask us questions, we are happy to answer. Regina is asking, can you answer not applicable on the performance if the grant is not yet completed? Miles, do you know that answer? Um, so you meant the question one, if you, has, let me read the question again. The, has the recipient successfully submitted the APR in time on the most recent expired grant term? So, um, so if you're saying that if it was in the 90 day period, say it's not applicable? The, Miles, no, if the grant. Yeah, they haven't, they, they haven't even completed, they haven't completed a year. Well, it'd be the most, it's recently expired grant. So it would be the previous one if that one's not expired yet. But so for like YHDP though, these are their first grants. Um, then you say, uh, well, you then you say no, it's the first time. Um, this is our first. No one given explanation. Uh, yeah. And, yeah, you'll explain. Uh, well, I don't even know if they have an NA. So if they have NA, great. Uh, uh, not applicable, but. I think it's a yes and no question. Um, right. And so, so no then you have to say no. It's, it's a fir uh, this is a first time renewal, and the, uh, and the, um, the APR is still currently active. Mm. Let, me, um, let me interject here. Katie is saying there are detailed instructions in the YHDP application on how to answer that question. So oh, it sounds okay. like if we read, yeah, so that's good information. Um, Brittany. Brittany wants to know, should we add dedicated plus to our descriptions now since we will be changing or can we keep the description that 100% of turnover will be prioritized to chronic homeless? I think I might change that, right, Liz? I don't, I think I might change it. Yes, I would. Because to say 100% of turnover will be prioritized to see chronic homeless is eventually going to be inaccurate. So yeah i would i would change that even though we're kind of encouraging you not to change descriptions that seems like a significant change yeah any other questions i don't see any in the chat box right now but we want to give you all time um and we we do this is our contact information by phone and by email and then of course you're going to submit your applications, your PDF applications, as Liz was saying, to the CP Boss Gmail account. I have a suggestion on uh, project descriptions, narrative, is to write it out if you're going to make changes to it, and maybe a lot of agencies will make a change. 
and sent it to uh, Liz and Shannon for their review on the uh, just the narrative, so they could look at it and say, "Here, maybe you could do it this way or whatnot." And make it here, uh, they may agree with your change or whatnot. So, well, you know, Miles, though I don't want to create another step, I think it's fine. We'll do it when we review when we review applications, and we'll just we'll caucus on on that piece. Okay. I don't want to give people another step, something else to do. Right. Right. Okay, I, I think I think we may be done. It doesn't look like no other questions are coming in. And of course, if you do think of questions, here's our contact information. You can reach out to us um, for questions. We very much appreciate all your time and effort um, it, on doing these applications and your time spending with us today. We know that you have important things to do and we appreciate you being with us now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And for those that have Any issues, comment? Oh, no? for, the, for those that have issues, uh, you know, um, not uh, with the exception of YHDP grants, which I might not have access to. Majority of the boss grants, I have access to the um, your application, so I could work with you on the phone while looking at your application and see what the issue is. So you could give me a call. And I could try to resolve the uh, the technical issue, like the uh, one we'll have to look at now is the uh, the hundred percent dedicated to dedicated plus. Uh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. Like Shane uh, said, we know that you guys have tough jobs, work really hard, and um, this feels like one more added thing. But we're here to try to make it less painful. Support your efforts, and uh, yeah, thank you. All right. Thank you. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Oh, um, I think it was Brittany. Uh, if you could just send me what